sort of the internal space, not just the space that you're living in, but the internal space, what's going on in your head is going to be really, and your heart is going to be really important to how your experience of living in a vehicle is going to be, whether it's short term or long term. Hey everyone, it's Julia. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up on my video about moving into a car. And I want to address some of the issues that aren't physical, like where are you going to park and whether you have water or not or how you're going to sleep. Because there's a whole like emotional component to this, a sort of component where it's like, who am I now? Am I the same person now that I'm living in a car? Or am I like now less than, or, you know, or am I freer or, or whatever the case is, it's going to be a change in your head about yourself. And I kind of want to address that, some of the emotions that you go through and towards the end of the video, my most important point. So stick around for that. One of the first things I had to deal with when moving into a vehicle was not only did I have to be stealth because at the time I was in a place where, you know, you're not supposed to be living in your vehicle. But I felt that I didn't want people to know that I lived in my vehicle because I felt like they were going to judge me. And I felt like, you know, I felt excited about it and free. But I also felt, um, especially as time went on into the first year and the second year, a, a little bit bad about myself for living in a vehicle. And I just want to give you the encouragement um, not to feel that way. I mean, it is what it is, right? And help you understand how to address some of these feelings. So, you know, I basically just ended up getting to the point where I accepted that I was living in a vehicle. But still to this day, I keep I keep stealthy. I don't like to hang all my blankets around my van, you know, drying them out, though I do do that. So I try and keep it like a little bit stealthy. I move around a lot, so I'm not like living in one place. One of the pieces of advice that I can tell you is, you got to decide, am I going to tell people that I live in a vehicle or not? And flat out, I suggest that you don't. Now, a lot of people will think it's really cool or they'll understand, especially if they've lived in a vehicle before or they're just a hippie and they understand. <laughs> but most people are not going to understand and they are going to hold it against you in a very subtle way. I've had people make assumptions about me that I didn't have any money because I was living in a van when we all know there are people like that famous basketball player that traveled around the country in his VW bus and lived in it, but he's like a millionaire. I mean, there's a lot of people like that, actually. We just don't hear about them. So people will make assumptions about it. And I just suggest not that you hide yourself and you can do whatever you want if you feel 100% confident in it. But for me, I've learned I don't tell people that right off the bat. It just helps the situation. Another thing that you're going to deal with is just fear in general, a fear when you move into a car, it's completely different. And I've heard this expression a lot. You know, is it safe out there? I would be so afraid if I was in my vehicle. The fact of the matter is you, as long as you cover yourself up and people aren't looking in at you, you are about as safe as you are in a house. I mean, people aren't breaking through these windows. Hopefully people realize that someone's living in a vehicle, that if they see a van, that people are living in a vehicle and they're not going to try and break the windows to steal something hopefully. I mean, that is a consideration. Outside of that, you have locking doors and thick windows, but there is the concern that it's dangerous out here. So you just need to do everything you can to make yourself safe. When I walk into my van, even if I'm just going to go out another minute later, I immediately lock the door. I lock the door if I come in just for a minute to go to the bathroom and then I go back out. Yeah, that door is getting locked every single time I'm in here. It's just a habit. And just remember, you can always drive off, and that's the beauty of it. But, you know, it's not going to be helpful for you to be in fear so much that you can't sleep at night. Fear, loneliness, pride, all of these feelings are going to be changing as you move into a vehicle. One of the best things I could suggest, too, is that you just keep your good habits because everything is going to be upended, right? Your whole life is pretty much upended moving into a vehicle. You're used to going into your bathroom and brushing your teeth, right? At a sink with running water. That's not going to happen. I mean, unless you have a very fancy van and all of that stuff's 
set up, but I'm kind of talking to the people that have had to move into their car either suddenly or just not by choice. Even if you have a van that you might not be prepared for this in the way that people are when they decide to do this and plan it and make it a big adventure or it's their retirement plan or whatever. So just you know, figure out how are you going to brush your teeth and keep with that good habit. If you go to the gym and work out on a regular basis, keep doing that. If you go out with friends once a week, keep doing that. Don't stay in the in the vehicle all the time. There's going to be a temptation to just stay in the vehicle all the time. You're going to have to make yourself get out and probably get outside and get out into different places like libraries or, you know, coffee shops or whatever, more than you usually do when you live in a house. Because when you live in a house, it's fine to stay in the house. That's what the house is for. But when you live in a vehicle, you're going to be cramped up in this vehicle, bent over, you know, crushed up sitting. It's going to be darker. And so I suggest that you make yourself go out uh, to get out of the van, but also make yourself do that to remain, you know, a normal person in a sense. Make yourself go out and interact with other human beings. Make yourself go out and get out of the sweatpants and sweatsuit and put on nice, decent clothes. Just sort of try and retain some of the normal aspects of your life like that uh, so that you can feel normal. And sort of related is don't develop bad habits because you're in the van now. It's harder to cook or whatever. You could find yourself just, especially if you're not working, you could find yourself just online all day and that's probably not going to be healthy. Or you could find yourself, like I said before, just eating fast food all the time or just isolating yourself and getting lonelier and lonelier. And this is another thing. Living in your vehicle is, you know, and having the need to get out of it, this is really going to give you an opportunity to enjoy nature more. You are now going to become a naturalist. You are going to get out. You're going to be parking at parks. You're going to have the opportunity to go to, you know, cool places where you can take hikes and stuff. Even if you're not traveling around, like traveling adventure, you can get out and walk around like you never have before. So I suggest that you get out into nature and that this is going to be an opportunity for you to reconnect with the natural world, reconnect with the outside world, reconnect with fresh air, reconnect with the sounds of birds. You know, it's amazing the things that Bambi and I see because we're going out so often into these parks and on these hiking trails. I mean, And having a dog will make you do that, obviously, but you can do it on your own. Just make sure you have, you know, pepper spray or whatever you need. But if you're in a city, you can also do the same. Nature's everywhere. There's a park everywhere. Obviously, the open sky is everywhere. So the whole world is nature, and it can be more or less green, you know, sort of out there in nature or not. This is a great opportunity for you to do that because we hole up in our houses way too much. And, of course, we're at our jobs, which is usually indoors. So it's quite an opportunity, and I suggest you take that opportunity. All right, one more thing just sort of about parking. This isn't about how to park, but... I would suggest, you know, you're basically going to find either the place that everybody parks at or you're going to be stealthy. You're going to be outside of some apartment building, totally stealthy. Whatever you do, I suggest you move around a lot. Do not find a comfortable place and then just stay there forever because the temptation to do that will be there. And then you'll find yourself sort of in this uh, rut. Um, The adventure side of it, the seeing new things... The waking up in new places is going to disappear and you're just going to be in one, you know, parking lot with the same vehicle. So (laughs) I would suggest like moving around. The other thing is a lot of times people will find that they can park at their job or near their job. I would be very careful about that because even though it sounds okay and your boss may even say it's okay, you know, that might not be the same for your coworkers. They might feel differently about you once they know you live in a vehicle. They might treat you differently. It might change your opportunities. So no matter what they say, I would be very weary of mixing your vehicle life with your work life. It's just too, you know, the chances are just too high that that's going to mess up your work life. And, and you don't want that. One more little thing kind of having to do with parking, but also having to do with fear 
and also having to do with connecting with others who are out here. I kind of have a rule where if it's nighttime and I'm sleeping in my van in a parking lot and there's other people out there in their vehicles, but also homeless people around, you know, when it's 10 o'clock or whatever the time period is, I don't talk to other people. If people approach my van at night, I don't talk to them. I mean, like if he's approaching, I go, no, do not approach my van. Like I'm not nice. I'm very like, nope. One time a guy came up, bang, bang, bang on my window. It was like midnight. I just went to the side window and I yelled, no, <laughs> and he ran off or like walked off. Desperate people do desperate things and there are desperate people out here. And there's just people that'll just ask you for stuff all the time. Hey man, you got a cigarette? Hey, you got this, you got that. I don't want to be mean to people, but I'm not even cracking the wind. I'm not even addressing people. At 10 at night, at midnight at night, you're approaching my van. No, I'm not going to address you then. I'm not saying to be fearful, but I just set yourself some rules. No contact after 10 p.m. The doors are already, always locked. You know, when I'm listening to my YouTube videos at night, if I hear something, you know, and periodically I'll just pause it and just listen. And I don't sit up front with the big light. Well, I do sometimes. You shouldn't sit up front with the big light of your phone. Because you don't realize how bright that is and how visible you are to others when you're sitting there like that. And again, in the back of your car, if you don't have curtains and you're just sitting there, people can see you and what you're doing. You're going to have to just become more aware, which is good for all of us anyway, right? More aware of your surroundings, more aware of what's going on around you. Keep your ear open. Keep your head on a swivel. You're not paranoid. You're not fearful. You're doing these things to prevent yourself from having to be fearful and from being in a dangerous situation and you'll be fine. You can't give everyone the benefit of the doubt when you're in a more precarious situation. So just keep that in mind. The fact is this whole situation is going to make you a survivor. It's going to make you way more capable. It's going to make you a minimalist, more efficient with your materials. You're not going to have a bunch of crap. No, I have to go through all this crap that's been here for 20 years. You're going to be done with that. You're going to be able to deal with SHTF better when it comes. One aspect is, yeah, you're going to already have your getaway van or your getaway car. It's already going to have water and food in it and a way to cook because you've already dealt with that by moving into a vehicle. You're literally going to be safer in a way than 99 or 90 percent of the population who isn't prepared at all i mean let's just remind ourselves the world is scary right now but it's always been the case that the water can be turned off at any moment the electricity can go down at any moment people are extremely vulnerable in these houses because they can't make a fire the houses aren't set up for that if the electricity goes down that's it so just a reminder of how tenuous everything has always been. And by being in a vehicle, because you've had to deal with this sort of different situation, you're going to be more prepared. All right, now this is the most important part of this that I really want to bring up is this issue of pride and how you feel about yourself now that you're living in a vehicle. The thing that you want to be most careful about is to not see yourself as a victim. And I know people don't like the term victim mentality and that it, you're calling people victims and you're shaming them and all of this. The fact is there is a victim mindset out there. It's a big reason why a lot of us get in this position in the first place. Um, it's a big reason why a lot of the people out on the streets can't get out of the situation they're in because once they're out there so long, they just fall into this victim mindset. And I just want to encourage you not to do that. Basically, living in the vehicle, you know, it's going to give you a chance to really assess your life. And you're going to be able to ask yourself these questions and you should ask these, yourself these questions. How did I get in this situation? Was there something better that I could have done? Was I you know, paying for too many services? Did I have Netflix and Amazon Prime and cable? Did you overextend yourself and spend more on things than you really were able to? Did you allow yourself to go into a lot of debt on your credit cards? Were you just trying to keep up with the Joneses? 
Were you eating out too much? Were you doing DoorDash too much? A five, ten dollar, I don't know, I've never done it, but I know that it's more expensive. So were the things that you did that normal everyday people do and you just felt it was a normal thing to do, but it was costing a lot of money that you really didn't have, was there a way you could pare your life down more to be more efficient um, and more frugal? Maybe you weren't doing all you could do to keep yourself in that apartment. So I, I'm not trying to criticize anybody here. I'm being very realistic about the questions you can ask yourself as to how you got in this situation. Was it interpersonal things, relational things? You know, are you like me, like a codependent or OCD where it's just very difficult for you to live with others? Because that can put a lot of us out here in these vehicles. So this time in a vehicle is really a time to reflect on this. Maybe it was just that you weren't fulfilling your dreams. You were just sliding along in the job that you don't really like. But the things that you really want to do, just you were too intimidated to take that move forward. You just didn't believe in yourself enough. You didn't know how to go about it. Because fulfilling your dreams and what your passions and what you're really good at is often a way to actually gain a lot more income and be a lot more successful. And a lot of us just don't do that because we're afraid or all of the other reasons I just brought up. So consider that. Is it just that you're really not doing what you should be doing? Maybe this is an opportunity to change that. Maybe it's just because housing is unaffordable. It's literally unaffordable. You did everything you could. Well, if it's that, then you're going to have to come to the realization now that you're going to have to live in a vehicle because it's too expensive to live in a house. And so it can be that. But again, you don't want to be a victim. You don't want to see yourself as a victim. And there are plenty of people out here when you get in this situation, and I've discovered this, there are plenty of people out here who encourage you to be a victim. One of the things I just don't do is hang out. I I sort of have a rule for myself. The rule is I don't hang out with people and be friends with people, you know, spend my time, my valuable time with people who don't work or don't have a passion project, something they're really into. Maybe they're a painter. Maybe they're a musician. It doesn't have to be making money. It has to be something that they're doing. I don't like to hang out with people that hang out and do nothing. And this is where you get a lot of this victim mindset. There's a lot of hanging out, doing nothing, and complaining about others, and complaining about the system, and complaining about you know, why you're there and how you can't get out. I just encourage you not to do that. There will be people out here who will support you in that. And if you start hanging out with a lot of people who are doing nothing and who are houseless and who are in this victim mindset, you're going to get the victim mindset too. It's like a whole culture. That's one reason it's so hard to get out of homelessness once you're in it is because there's this culture of it that keeps you, you know, feeling like that's normal and, you know... The world is filled with opportunity and beautiful things, and you just don't want to limit yourself. And let's talk about the system itself that tries to help people in this situation. Social services, the housing system, you know, benefits, waiting on lists for housing and all of this stuff. That system also encourages you to be a victim. They literally treat you like a victim, even though they try and not shame you and let you have your dignity. When you begin to go into the system and get assistance, and I'm not saying that if you need it, you shouldn't, you should. But when you do that, be aware that you have to let them know every aspect of your life, exactly what you're making. If your income changes by 10 bucks one month, you better tell them because they're going to need to make decisions about your life. I had a friend who told me she looked into this. She's in a van and The way the system was like, no, you need to get out of your van and go into this temporary shelter. We're going to have you in there for a couple months. Then we're going to move you over here. You're going to sign up for this. You're going to do this. They began to manage your life for you, really, in a sense. And that, I don't know how someone could feel, feel prideful when someone else is, you know, trying to take care of your needs, but also treating you like you need a handler. So the bottom line is, even if you have been victimized by the fact that housing is ridiculous, or maybe you've been abused or, you know, you just feel like a vic- whatever the case is, you're still the one that's going to have to pull yourself out of this situation. And being a victim is not going to help you in anything that you want to do. And let's face it, the bottom line is if more and more people are becoming houseless, not everybody can 
have free housing. This is an unsustainable system. I just really feel like we should take our own destiny into our own hands. That's what gives us the best shot of moving forward and the best shot of feeling happy, happy about ourselves and happy about our life. So here's the bottom line. You found yourself in a vehicle and once you've assessed your life and considered all of these things, it's going to come down to two things. Either, wow, I'm going to start making some changes. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to get better income. I'm going to work more jobs. I'm going to figure out what's going on with me on a personality level that's affecting my ability to keep jobs or whatever it is. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to get back into housing. Screw this. I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to get up early and go to work. I'm going to take care of my health. I'm going to be very frugal and I'm going to make this happen. So you're either going to do that are you going to go, you know what? It's impossible. I've decided, you know, the ridiculous amount of work that I would have to do to be able to afford the most basic apartment that I'm now going to be living in a vehicle. This may be forever. This may be just long term. And if that's the case, then you need to sort of flip away from how to get back into a house to how to make this situation better, how to make this situation really good, how to make this situation absolutely awesome. This is a chance for more freedom than most of us have had our entire lives. And let's not forget that there is a whole community of people out there, a lot of retired seniors and whatnot, that are in vehicles that have made it an adventure, not only traveling around, but all of the meetups like the RTR, where you get to meet people like you living in vehicles, learn all of the different things you can do to make it better, learn all the tricks of the trade, and sort of get in this mindset of, yeah, like the van life mindset, like, I'm doing this by choice. This is awesome. This is an adventure. You know, I got my stuff together back here. I can cook. I can go to the bathroom. I can shower, clean up. I can do it all. So I guess that's about it. I really just wanted to talk about sort of the internal space, not just the space that you're living in, but the internal space, what's going on in your head is going to be really, and your heart is going to be really important to how your experience of living in a vehicle is going to be, whether it's short term or long term. You need to know all the physical stuff, but uh, you don't want to go crazy living in a vehicle. You don't want to become depressed. You don't want to live in fear constantly. And you certainly don't want to begin seeing yourself as a victim. It's a very, very dangerous road to go down. I, I fight with this all, all of the time and I have my whole life. So there's some advice for you. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you want to support this channel, you can join my Patreon in the description below and you'll see a few extra videos there, but also some focus on what I'm doing with my sewing. If you like to see what I'm making and how I make, try and make money. So I appreciate you being here. I hope you got some value out of that and we'll see you later. I'm going to go get to work sewing. Have a good day.